Disclaimer. This video is made for entertainment purposes only. I do not own this content, nor do I intend any copyright infringement. Please support the original creators and watch Robot Revolution in its entirety where available. It might be a surprise to all of you, but I am indeed a maple syrup drinking, hockey playing, riding a moose to school in the morning Canadian. Yeah, I just love living in Canada. <laughs> just kidding. I've never played hockey. And the one thing you will find a plethora of in any town in the country is a gold mine of a store. Dollarama is one of those stores that has everything you'll ever need on a budget. It's a grocery store, a craft store, a bookstore. You can find cheap cleaning products here or face creams and shampoo. I mean, I wouldn't really recommend them because uh, it's a dollar store and your face might shrivel up and die. But on the bright side, you can find cheap Lego here sometimes. Nobody wants this Lego, huh? And over where they keep the cheap phone chargers, headphones, clocks, and Fortnite figures that no one wants, you'll find some really cheap and low-budget movies. Movies both cheap in price and in production. And the movie I'm talking about today for this Halloween video is Robot Revolution Machines Will Rise. Robot Revolution is a very low-budget indie film directed by Andrew Bellaware and released in 2015. And by looking at this cover, you would assume it's a kick-ass Terminator-like ripoff where a sentient AI takes over and this android superhero has to come and save the day. Uh. But nope, we get claustrophobic hallways and stairwells. But I'm not gonna say any more, let's just watch this masterpiece of a movie, shall we? And as we start the disc up, we get a couple trailers for some other low-budget movies. Dark Space, Disaster Wars, Earthquake vs. Tsunami, and Starship Rising. Dark Space and Starship Rising look fucking awesome. Even though if you mash both of the trailers together, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two movies. I grew up in the twilight of the Great Empire. We oppose this ridiculous war against the Terra Nostra. The Federation flourished, and the people were censored. You people are nothing but war mockers. And a new order would soon arise. Old Earth is to be vaporized. There's no more time for discussion. At 2300 hours, we strike. And excuse me? Earthquake vs. Tsunami. Oh my god, forget about Robot Revolution. I want to watch this masterpiece. I mean, I also use those green screen effects and explosions. The ultimate battle of land and sea. What am I watching a trailer for? Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire? Like is Groudon and Kyogre gonna come out of the ground? Finally, here we are. Robot Revolution, the machines will rise. It was produced by Still Night Monster Movies. So yes, it was supposed to be a horror movie. Happy Halloween, everybody. Then the next studio logo is for Pandora Machine, but the logo is just this naked lady with a gun. So what exactly is the story here? In a not too distant future, Every aspect of society is controlled by machines, and rampant terrorism has forced the state into martial law. While performing a routine check in a high-rise apartment building, a well-armed police officer and their android partner discover that something is causing the building's residents to malfunction, forcing them to fight their way out. Also, everyone in this universe at adulthood are legally bound to have an ID chip installed into their heads, so the ruthless police can easily identify them. So the movie starts with this lady talking down to us with a book light for some reason. Back online. Where am I? You don't remember. No, I do not remember anything. Any it's been the side effects of the decontamination process. Ugh, this gray static, I can't. You'll be seeing this gray haze for most of the movie because it's supposed to take place from the perspective of the main android. So prepare to see this gray screen for the majority of the movie. Anyway, after flying through some Nintendo 64 graphics, we meet the human main character named Constable Hawkins, played by Virginia Logan, along with her android partner Argus, who's played by either Walter Barney Barnes or Chance Shirley. I have no clue which one, it just says in the credits that these two play the android characters, so I'm assuming it's both. Hawkins is by far my favorite part of this movie. She's a badass cop with an eye patch who doesn't take shit from anyone. Shut up! If someone doesn't cosplay as her for the next Comic Con, I'm actually gonna riot. You know what? I'll cosplay as her right now. <laughs> I 
fair. And now we cut to the best CGI in the movie. Because, you know, if something is completely dark and you can barely see it, it looks real. She gives Argus a little upgrade, then gives us some very light foreshadowing. Are you comfortable working with androids? Yeah, they're generally reliable when they're not getting short-circuited, dismantled, or hacked. Humans can also be hacked. So they slowly walk around the apartment building for about a minute of the runtime with nothing else happening besides android walking sound effects. Jesus Christ, this movie's actually dangerous. Then this woman named Lisa and her son Carl confront the landlord about some noisy cleaning robot. The dialogue in this scene is just priceless. How many times do we have to complain about the noise? You know, the only noise I hear is... After the woman and her son leave, Argus assaults the landlord for the answers they need. 513. Uh, number 513. Thank you, citizen. Try not to kill too many civilians before our shift is up. Huh? My serve and protect protocols are up to date. Serve and protect protocols, my crack. They're actually looking for someone named Vic Richmond, who's been apparently making a weapon for a known terrorist named Damien Ra. But it says in the synopsis that it's a routine check. This seems more like an investigation to me. This next scene really confuses me. After a bit more walking and the most realistic shot of a generic city I've ever did see. We cut to these people playing poker with balls in a stairwell. Doesn't oh, matter. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Were you bluffing? Stop swindling this dipshit, Randy. I ain't holding the gun to his head. Hey, hey Randy, I I I'll play ya. Keep your money blank. Even I got too much pride to take money from the mentally disabled. Huh? After Hawkins and Argus find them, they start to scan this guy named TiVo, played by Matthew Trumbull, for his ID chip. What's your name? You can call me TiVo. TiVo? Need I remind you that in this universe, adults 16 years and over all have ID chips in their heads. Sorry, doll. No CID chip. I ain't 16 yet. What's wrong with you? Well... Methuselah syndrome. Premature aging. Yeah, this man is supposed to be playing a preteen under 16 years old because of premature aging? What? This just goes beyond high school TV drama casting. Why aren't they just young adults in their 20s? That's way more believable than this. After walking up more flights of stairs, Argus finds some edibles on this couple making out right in front of them. What do you want? I detect fellow ethylene in the possession of these citizens. What? What do you have on you? Nothing. Nothing! <laughs> Like, I don't understand what's with all the assaulting people for no reason besides having small edibles in their pocket or just being a landlord, I guess. You know, everyday police protecting and serving. Good Horace, but you're a vicious one, Argus. You told me not to terminate a large number of civilians today. I did, didn't I? Tell me again who I'm supposed to be rooting for here. Now we finally see the cleaning robot that's been causing all of the ruckus throughout the building. I mean, to be honest, for a low-budget movie, they really did their best with this robot. Yeah, it still looks like shit and doesn't look real at all, but it looks cool at least. It even has mechanical eyebrows just to show when it's about to get angry. So we finally arrive at Vic Richmond's apartment. So get comfortable, grab a snack, refill on your popcorn, because we're going to be here a while. What do you want? We want to talk about Damien Ra. Vic Richmond, played by Mary Murphy, is a very paranoid scientist. They interrogate her about the terrorist Damien Ra, and she lies twice to her face. At least I think so, because I honestly can't understand what she's actually saying. Yeah, well, word has it that one of his boys is holed up in this building. Terrorist? Here? 
from Kali Chibuaku, so you got me all afraid. I don't even see a bed, let alone another room besides just this kitchen. I've never heard of one kitchen, no bedroom, no bathroom apartments before, but here we are. And we finally get some conflict in the form of Damien Ra's henchmen making their way through the apartment building. Then once they finally arrive, demand the weapon that Vic has been working on. And this is where we get our first action scene, and it is glorious. That's it, don't move. Drop the guns. I said drop it! So because of this little squabble, the weapon is primed and goes off through the ventilation system. And now we cut to some random people that live throughout the apartment building. The couple that were making out in the stairs earlier, now in the basement. You know, where every lesbian couple hangs out to talk about taking showers. Babe, I think I need to go take a shower. Oh. Where are you gonna shower? Uh. I think Benifer has a shower. Uh. And this lady from earlier, who is now reading a book with her husband called Brothel. The preteens and the old man they were hanging out with from the stairs go to split off for the night and discover the previously broken elevator is now moving again. Yeah, you should know you busted that. Seneca must have had somebody fix it. Cool, that means I can break it again. What is he watching? Oh, yeah. Animal Crossing porn? Why is it making those sounds? <laughs> Just making regular sex noises would be way less weird than this. And now because of that weapon going through the ventilation system, the couple, the cleaning robot, the elevators, floor. <laughs> and the old man are the first infected. But by what exactly? That weapon Vic Richmond was working on? It was actually a mechanical virus. Invisible nanobots with the prime function to assimilate and convert everything with a microchip. That includes human ID chips that were installed into their brains. So Argus, Vic, Hawkins, and one of Ra's henchmen start to make their way to the lobby but run into the teenagers in the hallway still trying to get their friend out of the elevator. Pig, I mean officer, you gotta help us here. Our friend's trapped in the elevator. It started already. But he already died from the possessed floor, so can't really do much. Then the already converted old man walks out into the hallway and they just stand there and watch him for about a minute. And that gives Vic time to spout some exposition on us. His body's dead. The nanobots are in control right now. They're operating him like a flesh puppet. Technically, no, not zombies. Flesh puppets for microscopic sentient robots. And I have to say, considering that I was strictly working from theoretical constructs, they're pretty much doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing. Wait, you're basing this whole nanobot thing of converting living people into flesh puppets was all theoretical? And now the zombified apartment residents all attack them at once. So all the main characters flee to another floor. After breaking into the old couple's apartment that were reading Brothel from earlier, this is where most of the exposition is gonna set in. Since this hacking virus is in the air and described as a combat virus, I have no idea what that means, um, it's already done its job and should be gone from the air by now, which I don't understand. How can a mechanical thing just disappear into thin air? I, I don't I don't get it. And this part is just everyone arguing and throwing death threats around, but I agree with TiVo here. You can shut your fat face. You got us into this. And what makes you think that? Oh, it doesn't take a genius to figure it out. You designed this weapon for that guy. It is definitely her fault for making this weapon in her no bedroom, no bathroom, kitchen only apartment. Not to mention she has little to zero empathy for the people that just died. Uh, well, if the two constables hadn't bumbled their way in here, that guy would have had his canister and been on his way. My friends are dead. I've seen your friends, not a big loss. Oh, I'm gonna kick your face. Then they realize that disconnecting the building from the entire power grid can slow the rate of infection. So she calls the landlord from earlier to do the job for them. Leave me alone. I've paid my debt to society. Twice. Listen, asshole. Are you in your office? Who are you calling asshole? Shut up and listen. And he's almost immediately attacked by a zombified Lisa, and they all assume he's dead. What 
a hero. <laughs> But he succeeds right before turning, because of course he does. So we're just about halfway through the movie and things are getting quite tense. And now this is just the perfect time for Vic to tell everybody that their cell phones can work as emitters. So you're saying that all of our cell phones could be emitters? Given enough time, yeah. And that would be enough to take down the zombies? Well, not without breaking their shielding. And by that, you mean crack the skulls. See, I told you, shoot him in the head, like I said. Yeah, that would have been nice to know three years ago. And why didn't she tell them this before? No idea. I thought being a scientist made you smart. Now, the horde of zombies... They're not... Uh, screw it. ...make their way up the stairs towards them. The terrorist guy then pulls out a surgically implanted gun from his chest and threatens them. Stay back! Get that gun out of my wife's face! Drop the gun or I kill her. How'd you do it? I used a proximity release on your cell phone during our close encounter room. I was able to retrieve my surgically implanted backup. You son of a bitch. You had a gun implanted? This man had a flesh pocket installed with an emergency gun? He then tries to leave stupidly, letting the whole horde inside. They're all attacked, only leaving TiVo, Hawkins, and Vic alive. After more searching and walking around for no reason, and I have absolutely no clue what floor we're on at this point. They find Carl alone in his apartment building right before they encounter the cleaning robot again. So Hawkins and Argus distract it and flee into the basement. And the Oscar goes too. Virginia Logan for her role in Robot Revolution. Well, it worked. The robot's following us. The bad news is, it worked. The robot's following us. The damn robot's got a laser cannon! When here to be a decommissioned military drone. Why is this in a residential apartment building with children? These shootouts are just art. <gasps> and this part is just wild. TiVo and Carl are just walking around trying to find a way out and find the zombified Lisa. So, armed with a baseball bat, TiVo kills the kid's mother right in front of him. Soon after their little shootout in the basement, Hawkins reboots Argus to find that he's infected with the mechanical virus, and then starts strangling her. And we finally see that lady from the beginning of the movie again. She and her own android partner go around killing the rest of the humans in the building. Damien Raw henchman guy, TiVo, Carl, Vic, all the main characters, dead. The events that transpired here today are not what we planned. Ideally, we would have sought a higher value target. This will have to do. And it turns out it was the government's fault the whole time. Yippee, it always is. And plot twist, Damien Ra doesn't exist, you stupid machine. He's just a convenient boogeyman to keep people nice and scared. But sometimes the boogeyman has to jump out and yell boo once in a while. So they use our main characters as a scapegoat. Vic Richmond was a known raw conspirator. Evo was a delinquent with an extensive criminal record. And Carl Vega, you know, the 10-year-old child who was innocent in all of this. He was a member of the Church of the New Osirens. Quite a merry band of terrorists they make. Is that what these masks behind this door were for? Are they part of an actual cult? It's just vague reasons all around here. So now they're planning to cover it all up by erasing Argus's memories so none of it gets out. And that just leaves one last loose end. Your memory. You are a superior officer. Naturally, I will obey your orders. Yeah. I'm afraid that's not really going to be good enough. If you were listening earlier, I didn't put Hawkins on the kill count. Hell yeah. No, please. I don't know what you heard, but I can explain. And with one good shot through the hand, she did it. She saved the uh, apartment building, not the whole world like it shows on the front cover. False advertising, I think. 
that was a uh, definitely a movie I got at the dollar store. To be perfectly honest, it's not horrible. It could be edited down a little, so there's not that much walking around with nothing happening, and the gray static is really annoying to look at and takes up a lot of screen time. Movies don't usually use every single piece of footage they film, that's why they have a deleted scene section. But all in all, it was a really good low budget movie. Just saying this video is all in good fun. I really honestly congratulate the actors and filmmakers for putting this out into the world. It's more than I can ever do. And I really do actually like the lore surrounding this universe. Like if they made some comic books based on this world, I would absolutely support it. And if you guys want a copy yourself, um, I found my copy at a Dollarama during Halloween. So um, I don't know if it could be there or not, but uh, good luck. Happy Halloween, everybody.